Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I have a bit of a book haul. So today I have a book haul for you. In fact, I have a book and stationery haul because I have some nice notebooks I want to show you. I don't usually speak about stationery very much on this channel, but I feel like in general, people who like books do also like stationery. So I thought I might as well today. Um, and yeah, I just have a bunch of books that I have acquired in the last few months that I haven't hauled yet on my channel. So I thought I would do that today. Um, but before I get into the book haul, um, I did just want to like have a chat about a couple of things. Um, mostly just I wanted to say thanks for like everyone's support on the two videos I put up last week. The video I put up about going freelance and all of those kind of big life and potentially channel changes and also the video I put up with my cover reveals for my debut novel. I'm really really grateful for everyone's like excitement about the covers that makes me like very very happy. I love the covers so much I think they're both really really beautiful so I'm really pleased that people like them. Um, it's really really nice and I'm just excited that people are excited for my book because I'm very excited for my book so you know that's good. Um, and thanks as well for everyone who commented on my video about going freelance whether or not I want to do Patreon and all that kind of stuff. I have turned on Super Thanks, which is like YouTube's kind of tip function thing. So that should be directly on this video if I've worked out how to do it correctly. Um, and that's just like a tip jar thing where you could like click and give money if anyone wants to like ever give me extra support. This isn't something I would like mention every video. I might just put it like on the end screen um, like with an arrow down to where it is and then I'll probably not speak about it very much. Um, but you know, that'll be there. Um, I'm gonna have a think about whether or not I do Patreon or any of the kind of bigger things. Um, I think I probably would like to do Patreon at some point and do some kind of book club. But I think I need to, you know, basically be freelance for a few months first and see how much time I have. Um, because as I said, anything I do on Patreon would always be like extra stuff on top of the stuff I'm doing on this channel anyway and um, so I need to like have a better sense of my time because three weeks into being a freelance I do feel quite busy which is really nice and exciting um, and I'm enjoying all the work I'm doing so far so you know we'll see at some point I might do Patreon I'll let you know if I do um, but I think that's probably if I do that it'll be in like six months time rather than imminently I suppose um, so yeah we'll see how I go um, but thank you for everyone's feedback that was really helpful and it was really good to see what people thought um, and I really appreciate everyone's like support and understanding and stuff and yeah it's been a pretty exciting and strange few weeks really um, but anyway let's get into talking about the books so I have nine books to talk to you about today which are the books that I have got in June, July and August I have already read quite a few of these in fact I've already read about half of them so um, I'll go through those ones quite quickly because you've probably already heard me talk about them but I did still kind of want to include them in a haul because I do quite like um like keeping track of the books I am acquiring in that way I suppose um and yeah my TBR is is okay but it's not it's not as small as I would like I feel like I need to like really strictly limit how many books I acquire between now and Christmas. Um, there are like a couple of books I've been asked um, about review copies for that I'm kind of tempted to um, read because they sound amazing. Um, and there is also um, a new short story collection coming out in October, which I'm very excited about, um, which is the follow on to um, The Haunting Season, which came out last year and I loved, which was basically like a collection of short stories by all my favourite writers. And then there's a new one with the same concept coming this year called The Winter Spirits, which sounds excellent. So I will be getting that when it comes out. Um, but apart from that, I feel like I need to try and do it myself and get through some of the books on my TBR, but there we go. Anyway, let me tell you about the books that I've acquired lately. Um, so first, I just wanted to quickly mention The Half-Life of Valerie Kay by Natasha Pulley. Um, I had a proof copy of this, but I also pre-ordered it because I love Natasha Pulley very, very much. And I really wanted a hardback too. And I just absolutely adored this book. It was fantastic. Natasha Pulley is pretty much my favourite living author. I think her books are absolutely amazing and The Half-Life of Valerie Kay was no exception. This is set in 1960s Russia and it's about a man called Valerie who's taken from the Gulag where he's been in prison for many years um, and moved to a scientific facility um, which is something to do with radiation where he is going to be working as a scientist um, and serving out the rare remainder of his sentence there. But things there are quite weird and everything goes on from there and I just loved it so 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 much it's so good definitely one of my favorite books of the year would highly highly recommend it then i also got um four books for jane austen july all of which i have already read um so i got one non-fiction book this is a truth universally acknowledged um 
33 Great Writers on Why We Read Jane Austen, which is a series of essays all about why we read Jane Austen from various writers throughout history. Um, so, like, there's essays from modern writers, but there's also an essay from, like, C.S. Lewis, Virginia Woolf, um, Ian Forster. Um, and this was just a really interesting, great read. So one I'd recommend. You also got this. This is The Old English Baron by Clara Reeve. Um, and this is a 18th century Gothic novel, which is about an old English Baron, a, his young ward and a mysterious house with a shut up wing where mysterious secrets might be held. And it was just really enjoyable. I really like this a lot more than I often enjoy 18th century literature. I mean, I did find it very readable. As I often find with 18th century literature, the characterization was a bit flat, but like in general, this was a really good read. And yeah, definitely one I'd recommend if you're interested in picking up some 18th century Gothic literature. Then two new releases that I got um, in June and July, for June Austen July, both of which I completely adored. Um, one is Infamous by Alex Crouchier. This book is wonderful and fun and excellent and clever, and I just loved it very, very much. Um, so this is Lex's second book. Um, their first book, Reputation, came out last year, and I actually worked on it when I used to work at the publisher who published Lex's books. And I loved Reputation. It was so much fun to work on, so I was hugely excited to read their next book, Infamous, um, and I loved Infamous very much too. It's set in the Regency period, and it's about a young woman called Edith who wants to be a writer. Um, she doesn't want to get married. She doesn't want her life to change, but her best friend Rose is starting to think a bit differently, and everything goes on from there. And it just, it's just wonderful. And then I also bought myself um, Garbushman Park by Jill Hornby, which was just incredible. One of my favourite books of the year so far. I don't know, I just, there's something about Jill Hornby's books, Miss Austen and Godbusham Park, that like brings me the joy that I get from Jane Austen. Um, and that's very, very high praise because I love Jane Austen a lot. There's something about the way she writes, which I just absolutely love and is absolutely for me. So Godbusham Park is a work of historical fiction set in the early 19th century following real life people. Um, so we're following Anne Sharp, who was the governess to Fanny Knight, um, Jane Austen's niece. And in this book, we're following Anne Sharp, um, her work as a governess, um, and her friendship with Jane Austen and also Jane's brother Henry, and I just loved it so much. I loved all the parallels to Mansfield Park, I loved the writing, I loved the characterization, and I just, yeah, it was amazing. Also, this hardback edition is absolutely beautiful. My favourite thing about it is that um, the cover is like set up to be like embroidery, which is absolutely beautiful, and then the inside of the jacket is like the back of the sewing piece. Isn't that so cool? And also the end papers are lovely. I just, yeah, I love it very, very much. So those are the books that I have already spoken about. Um, and then I have four other books, which I haven't mentioned yet on this channel, which I'm really excited to get to. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I used to work at the publisher who published Lex Croucher. Um, and the next two books I have are also second books by authors who I worked on when I worked at Bonnier, but I didn't work on these books, but I worked on their first books. So it's really exciting that I will at some point very soon um, read their second books. So this is The Girl on the 88 Bus by Freya Sampson. Um, I worked on her first book, The Last Library, when I worked at Bonnier um, and really, really loved it. It was so charming and fun and lovely. Um, and I feel like Freya writes really wonderfully about community. Um, and I'm really excited to read The Girl on the 88 Bus. And this is about a young woman who moves to London um, and ends up befriending um, an elderly man that she meets on the number 88 bus and he tells her the story of a woman he met on the bus years and years ago um, who he fell in love with um, but they got separated um, and then Libby is going to try and like reunite them I think and it just sounds utterly delightful um, and I can't wait. And I'm also very very excited for this Wild Wild Country by Inga Vesper and um, this is a proof copy um, and I worked on Inga's first novel The Long Long Afternoon when I worked at Bonnier and it was another truly wonderful book that was just utterly amazing. Um, fantastic work of historical fiction that I highly recommend um, and I'm really excited to read This Wild Wild Country. I think this book is set in the American West in the 1930s and also the 1970s and it's about um, like the people in the 1970s solving some kind of mystery that happened in the past. Inga writes absolutely fantastically and I'm hugely excited to pick this up. And then finally just two books I happened to buy myself in July and um, here I have The Smallest Man by Francis Quinn. Um, this has been vaguely on my radar for ages and I found um, an edition with sprayed edges in a charity shop which is quite rare and this is in really good condition um, so I couldn't resist buying it because I have been meaning to read this for a while and this is a very beautiful copy. So this is a work of historical fiction set in the 17th century um, and I think it is like loosely inspired by the life of a real man but I think it is a kind of fictionalised version with a, a different name but it is inspired by a real life person who was a courtier in the 17th century and had dwarfism and I think this kind of looks at 
a fictional version of that man. And I've just heard really good things, so I'm excited to pick this up. Then I also picked up this. This is Dear Reader by Kathy Rensenbrick. Um, and this is a work of nonfiction, which I think is just like all about the love of reading. Um, I don't know too much about this, but um, the subtitle is The Comfort and Joy of Books. And I've heard a lot of people on Booktube absolutely rave about this. Um, so I feel like this might be a nice read um, and it's quite short as well. It might be quite a good one for nonfiction November this year. So I'm gonna put this on my shelf and save it for nonfiction November. And I'm really looking forward to it. Those are all the books that I've acquired lately. Um, but I do have a few like little bits of stationery I want to show you. I thought that would be fun. Um, so firstly, as I mentioned in my last video, talking about going freelance, and um, I recently left my job, um, and my colleagues at HarperCollins very kindly got me like some really lovely stationery when I left, which has my name on, which is really fun. Um, so I have a very pretty notebook that says Katie Lumsden on, which is very nice, and I will use for writing stuff, because it's got my name on, which makes it feel like it's an author thing. Anyway, um, and then they also bought me like note cards that have my name on too, which are very, very beautiful too, um, and I really love. So that's very nice, and I'm very excited to own them. I think it's really fun to have. And then the other thing I have recently got is this. This is a Clever Fox planner. Um, so Clever Fox are a company which make planners um, and they very kindly like sent me one of their planners for review effectively, I guess. Um, and I think this will be really useful, especially now I've gone freelance and I don't have like, um, you know, a manager and I'm kind of my own manager. I feel like it'll be quite useful to like have this kind of thing that is like helping with like sort of my own career, I suppose, that I'm doing on my own. The planner has lots of different sections for like one year goals and five year goals and then calendars and that kind of thing and like monthly reviews. And then the main thing it has is like um, weekly to-do list and goals and stuff. So I think I'm gonna use this now in freelance um, to like manage my time in my life. Um, I love organization, which you might know if you've ever seen my um, goals videos and my really weird over the top spreadsheet. But I just really enjoy like organization and checklists and stuff. So I think this planner will be really useful and really interesting for that. Um, and it's also really nice. So I'm excited to get started using this. So yeah, those are all the things that I wanted to show you today. Some books and some stationery that I've got lately, which I really like. Um, and yeah, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Do let me know down in the comments if you've got any books lately that you're really excited for um, and if you've read any of the books that I've got that I haven't read and what you thought of them. And that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.